Okay, next up on the main stage is Arizona State with head coach Bobby Hurley and student athletes Remy Martin and Rob Edwards. Round of applause. Um, coach, go ahead with your opening remarks, and then we'll uh, toss it to you. Thanks for having us here. We're, we're very excited to, uh, to be here in San Francisco with everyone and having a great day just uh, sharing uh, our program with everyone. It's been, it's been a fun and busy day, and um, happy that Remy Martin and, and Rob Edwards uh, could join me. Uh, so I'll open it up to any questions you might have. Michelle and others, feel free. Yeah. Don't be shy. We'll open up the questions to uh, the student athletes in the back and Coach Hurley up front. At risk of asking you all the stuff we've already asked you. Yeah. <laughs> what about the identity of this year's team? What do you expect it to be? Uh, what is the ident identity of this year's team? Uh, we're still, uh, I think, in, in the process of determining that uh, each day in practice. Um, we do have a strong core of, of returning players that have now been to consecutive NCAA tournaments, so there's uh, a good expectation uh, of winning a lot of basketball games, so that's uh, a good feeling for a coach to bring back uh, you know, players like Rob Edwards, Remy Martin, Kamani Lawrence, Romello White, who uh, you know looks fantastic, uh, and uh, Tayshawn Cherry, and and then we've added you know some solid guys as well. Um, so uh, I think we'll resemble more of of what my team was like two years ago than last year's team. I think we had a little more physical, dominant way about how we could rebound and defend, and you know losing Zylan Cheatham and Lou Dort, we've added uh, some different guys that uh, I think will make us a little bit more guard oriented. Uh, a more dangerous team in terms of being able to score the ball in, in a variety of ways and just have some positional versatility with our roster and, and some big wings also to go along with uh, with the smaller guards. And, and again, uh, Romello White has had a great offseason. I, I expect him to have a, a big year. Uh, Rob Edwards uh, missing a lot of games with a back injury. How much are you looking forward to having him full strength the whole year, having that three-point shooting that adds to your team yeah he was he was phenomenal again two years ago when he was sitting out I was just like chomping at the bit to want to get him in and then uh, just all last year to his credit he didn't talk about it but he you know he pushed through you know some back pain and stiffness and wasn't himself and uh, just wasn't didn't have the time to to make it right and uh, but he's had you know he we addressed it in the off season. he's uh, there's no one that works harder on their game is more disciplined um, in, in taking care of their body. And it's just great to see him happy and out on the floor, moving freely. And he had a, he had a play in our, uh, our layup line where he threw it off the backboard and was way over the rim, dunking it. And just I don't remember seeing that too often uh, last year. So I'm excited for Rob and the season he could have. Is this Remy's team? Kind of I don't get into like to whose team it is. I'm not like that type of coach where I, I declare like someone is in charge of the team. And it's, uh, it's more, you know, group effort, collaborative effort. I think the best teams I've had have been dangerous at multiple positions. I think Remy certainly has earned the right to have a, have a strong voice in the locker room because of what he's accomplished on our team and, and being a guy that's, uh, you know, projected to be an all league player coming in. And he set a good uh, tone in, in our off season training program for how hard he's worked and set a good example for the players coming into the program about how we operate. Talks this time of year about extending his range. Where is he at in that process? Is he still kind of in that 15, 16 foot area? With Romello, I haven't told him like he can't shoot a jump shot yet. So that's that's where we're at with that. Um, you know, I think he's he's added more of a comfortability with, with facing up in, in the mid post and and uh, not strictly being a back to the basket guy. And uh, so he's going to get a lot of touches uh, in that way. And if teams back off, I have confidence in him shooting it. He's, he's worked very hard on it in the offseason. And I would expect that would translate into increased you know, free throw percentage for him as well, because I think he's going to get to the free throw line. What are your thoughts on us starting the season in China? And how does that kind of change maybe your, your preseason routine, seeing as you're going to have to go to China, like a lot more travel early on? Yeah, there's a little more urgency in our practices just trying to to get our system in place more and, and, and throwing more at our players to really hopefully they retain what we need to get done. It's, it's kind of like losing a week almost in, in terms of practice time with, with all the travel. So that's an issue we've been able to 
get off to a very fa fast start in the non-conference the last two years, and we're hoping to continue that trend. And uh, so we just, you know, we can't afford to lose days. We just got to make sure we're productive every day. Who are a couple guys that aren't named Edwards or Martin that you need to step up? Yeah, I just think, uh, you know, I think we're going to be very balanced on offense. And uh, I, wouldn't, I could see a scenario where there's six guys in double figures. I think we're going to score a lot of points. Uh, I think we could score enough points that that's a realistic possibility. Uh, players that have come in, new guys, Lonzo Verge is making a strong impression on everybody in our, uh, in our workouts. And there were days in our gym where he was, it might have been the best guard that I've had since I've been in ASU, just watching how much he got done in, in, in a session, just for how talented he was and a variety of ways that he could create and, and make shots and make plays for his teammates. So I just have high hopes for Alonzo Verge. And then, you know, Jalen House is another guy that's got a ton of energy and uh, he's got a great pedigree. His dad was a hell of a player for ASU and he's uh, just always played against really good teams and good competition in high school. So he's you know, he's ready for, for the college level. I think he'll have a chance uh, to make an impact with our guard core. Does the change in the three-point line affect you offensively at all? I, I think it's a, it's a positive for us. I mean, it, I think it's going to depend team to team based on how well they could shoot it. I think we, you know, we'll be vastly improved shooting uh, from, from a distance from last year's team. Uh, just with, I'm hopeful Tayshawn Cherry continues to look as good as he looks in workouts, and he's got the ability at the four to really stretch the defense as well as Kamani Lawrence. And then, you know, there's not a guard that I'm going to put in the game that can't, you know, can't shoot from uh, from the added distance of, of the uh, the new college three point line. So hopefully it opens the floor, and you know, my guards could get in the paint more effectively. Coach, no Kansas on the schedule this year, unfortunately. See, so no automatic uh, chance at a big win unless you get the opportunity at Virginia. How do you feel overall about the way you scheduled? And obviously, you know, playing in Dayton the last two years, it's probably been a big topic of conversation. Yeah, I just think you know, I think top to bottom. Hopefully, we're we're more con committed as as a league to to take care of business in the non-conference and do a better job across the board of getting quality wins and. Uh, We'll try and get whatever quality wins we can to bring into into conference play, and that's gonna that's gonna help everybody. I'm sure I'm not the first one to say that. Uh, usually, you win 22 games and and you get 12 wins in your league, and you know you shouldn't shouldn't be in Dayton. You know you should be an eight seed. So hopefully, uh, you know we'll, we'll do a better job of that across the board, and and we won't be in that position. And Jalen Graham um, had, came on pretty strong late uh, in his high school career. How's he looking so far in practice? Yeah, Jalen's been uh, sidelined here in the short term with, with a with an ankle, and it's it's not uh, it's not too severe, you know. But he's he's probably another ten days away from getting back into our practices, and but he uh, again he, he made a strong impression over the summer, and he's very active. Um, you know, I could see him uh, being a guy that goes goes after the ball, block shots, rebounds, and he could finish. So we're uh, we're happy with Jalen his progress. Great, thank yeah. you. I've been, I'm Julie Jay from the Salt Lake Tribune. Um, I've been doing my own, uh, I guess, survey, I guess, of coaches and um, talking about social media policies. Um, do you have one for your players? Is there anything that you know, do you make them put their phones away before the before games, or, or kind of uh, how do you deal with the criticism that they can receive via social media so easily? Yeah, I mean, we just we have some training that we do, you know, with our sports information, just to talk about social media, and it, it it's like your own independent press conference so just be careful you know what you say you got to own it once you tweet it or put it on Instagram and um, and then yeah we have some just general things to try and avoid saying and um, and hope that the guys follow our team rules regarding you know social media how is it different than your playing days yeah I mean it's it's more pressure on, on, on all our athletes our student athletes just with you know you miss a shot, it's it's immediate, you know, and then you, someone might be tweeting at you. So it's it's uh, it's tough for those guys to handle that. And uh, you know, my advice is just to not look at it, try and avoid it as much as you can. Right? Are you kind of glad that you didn't have to, to do? Yeah, I mean, it's it's more of a microscope for them, and, and it's uh, it's more personal, and more people could reach them that could ever reach me if you know when I played a bad game, I just kind of went back to my dorm and I might have had a few messages on my answer machine or something <laughs> like you know why why'd you play so bad or something but yeah i didn't have to deal with what our guys have to deal with now right. yeah
Thank Tem you. Tempo-wise, Bobby, are you going to change at all, or is, it, is this team maybe present some challenges that way, where you maybe open up the floor, play a little bit quicker? Yeah, I mean, I think our guards are built to to play in transition, play in a, in a fast game, and and get up and down the floor. And like I said, you put a lot of a lot of guys that could get up and down the floor and that could shoot the ball. Then, you know, you have a lot of options. And uh, and then we do have a guy I think we throw the ball to inside, and and Romello White, just the way he looks and what he's doing in our workouts. That I think we're going to have enough balance that we'll be able to attack in a variety of ways. You talked about it before, but like, well, how how did it happen that, that you've gotten off to these great starts? Because people are talking about changing their schedule now, and it's so important to play well in November. I mean, you guys basically have been the, the prototype for that by design, or you, you know, you I came think out of the shoot twice, unbelievably. Yeah, I, I think two years ago we did the foreign tour in the, in the prior summer, which really helped. We were able to get a lot of practices in in July, and then you know, we had. Guys were fed up with losing, basically, myself included, um, Shannon Evans, Trey Holder. And, and then that's kind of, we kind of built off that momentum. And then we had Zylan Cheatham and, and Rob Edwards sitting out, and we brought in Lou Dort, so we didn't really miss a beat. But when you have guys that now believe that that's what we should be doing, it's, it's, it's in their nature to expect that and to put the work in to, to want to do it. I, I wish I could give you a more clear reason, like why, like, I don't know, we're, I guess we're 21 and three in two years, but that's a pretty, pretty strong, um, you know, non-conference resume. Yeah. Did the guard thing, was there an evolution there or was it by design? I mean, you could make a case, your family has had two pretty good guards, uh, fantastic careers, but I mean, did you go in with, hey, I want to have great guards or that's going to be the key to our Program. I mean, I just hope that it was one of my strengths to try and identify what I look for in a guard and everyone has their own preferences. And I think that, you know, that's the first step is being identify guys that you could really want to coach that, that, that fit how you want to play and, and what your vision is for, for how we play. And I've kind of leaned towards, you know, fast guards that could penetrate and shoot. And, and Lou Dort was kind of an anomaly, just like this guy's like, a freak specimen, and, you know, physical, and I, I, I thought he would fit in nicely too. So I, I made an exception for him being a, a bigger, stronger guard. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've had two point guards at Buffalo at work there um, and getting to the tournament, and I just thought it would be something. It's a good place to start in college basketball to have you don't good want to guard say play. That there may you know. be guys want to play. Guys want to play for you because of, of the way you played and the way the way you coach your guys. It's I mean, from a style standpoint, you know, they, they go in prepared with structure, and but it, I try not to overcomplicate things. And um, rarely are, are they looking over their shoulder unless it's a, it's an effort issue. It's it's not because, you know, they might have taken a borderline shot. I I, I live with some stuff uh, because I trust them. I trust the work they put in, and and then uh, I I want I want them to play freely. I want to, you know, that's that's how I was given the freedom as a player, and that's kind of what I gravitated to. What's the next step for Rob this year? Like, what, what is, what's Rob's uh, – I, I know the upside is there, but, like, what, what, what is the key for him this year? I just think, you know, he's got he's to he's be more consistent because I think, first of all, he's injury-free and he feels good. And, uh, you know, I, I think he's got a, the chance to put a lot of points on the board for us. But I, I've noticed also him – you know, making an impact defensively, using his strength and his, his size. And, uh, you know, that's, that's something that he could really tap into that, that could help our team because, uh, you know, again, I'm not too concerned about scoring it. I do think that we need to improve uh, defensively big time here in the next few weeks. And I'm glad that I'm seeing that from Rob at that end of the floor, taking more responsibility because, you know, Dort would take the, the best offensive player most nights uh, and then J Zylan would take the best uh, – front court guy, so we, we need guys to be able to replace those guys from a defensive standpoint. I just want – Remy's been – it feels like Remy's been there almost as long as Doug, and yet he's only a junior. <laughs> I mean, he, he, he's been there so long. It, it, it's amazing. Uh, just because from day one he's he's been a factor for you guys? Yeah, I mean, I still – I watched our Kansas game at Kansas and just watched how good he was in that game and just uh, – you know, stealing the ball from those guys and driving to the hoop and scoring and hitting big threes and he's got a signature flex and he's you know he's, he plays with just so much raw passion and energy that uh, 
you know, so yeah, it's, it's, I'm glad he's, uh, he's still around, though. <laughs> he's, he's got a couple of years uh, with me, so I don't want him to go yet. To get where you want to be at the end of the year, you know, NCAA tournament, what's the one thing that you feel your team has to do in order to, in order to get Yeah, I mean, there's so many things that go into that, so that's a tough one just to, to specify. Yeah, I, I think rebounding, I talk about rebounding every year, and I didn't really rebound at all when I played, so it's ironic I talk about it rebounding all the time. <laughs> And uh, But two years ago, I didn't know if we could get a rebound because we were so small. Last year, I thought we should get every rebound because we had guys who were playing two feet over the basket. And this year, uh, I'm hoping we can get a rebound. So it's just it's a cycle again. So I think that'll be the one area that game to game that I'm going to be really, you know, just instilling a desire from every, everyone to uh, rebound the ball. So. All right, that's all we have time for. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Coach Early.